A single act of good can go a long way. It can cross oceans, cure disease, and create equality. As members of Rotary, we are people of action, and our actions have the power to speak loud and clear. Our vision and commitment to finding solutions provides access to high-quality care so vulnerable mothers and children can live longer and grow stronger. Rotary members worldwide work to improve maternal health and reduce child mortality by increasing access to essential medical services and implementing life-saving programs. We're providing comprehensive maternal care, preventative screenings, and family planning that empower women and girls to take charge of their own destinies. Our efforts aren't just changing lives. They're saving lives and strengthening families by training birth attendants, providing prenatal care, newborn immunizations, and facilitating mobile health clinics. Thanks to Rotarians like you, patients are receiving the practical and compassionate treatment they deserve so that babies are born safely into the arms of healthy mothers. Your contribution keeps mothers and babies far and wide connected to a world of good. Every gift is an action that speaks volumes in delivery rooms, communities, and across continents. Learn how you can support the cause that means the most to you. And welcome to the Rotary Club of San Dimas meeting for September 30th. It's my pleasure to introduce our president, Diva Alfaro. Thank you everybody for joining us. Like Raymond said, my name is Diva Alfaro. I am the San Dimas Rotary uh, Club president uh, two years in a row. I want to go ahead and pass this on to Steve Scott for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, just checking to make sure everybody can hear me okay? Yes. You're good. Okay, please join me in honoring the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Steve. Now, next I would pass it on to um, Casey for in invocation. Let's, uh, Almighty God, we seek unity, we seek truth, we seek the betterment and movement, the good of all. We pray that in our time together, we would be spurred on and encouraged to do more, to take action, and to bring influence to the world. We thank you for the power that lies within us, and we thank you for the growth and the power that lies when we do things together. Would you multiply that? and lift us up and encourage our hearts. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Casey. So I'd like to go ahead and I see we have a lot of guests here today. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and each Rotarian is going to introduce themselves at, and uh, say something brief about themselves so that you get to know us a little better. So I'll go ahead and, and start one more time and say, again, my name is Deval Faro. I grew up in the city of San Dimas. I have been a Rotarian for uh, close to three years, a two-year um, club president, and I am a mortgage lender in our community, and I service uh, the, uh, the entire nation. If I can pass it on to, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Raymond. Hey there, I'm Raymond Foster, past president of the San Dimas Rotary Club, currently the public image chair and not the face of Rotary. <laughs> okay, next, uh, Marianne, if you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Marianne Kistler. I am a retired banker. I've been in Rotary over 23 years, and um, I just uh, love what Rotary stands for. Perfect. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, go ahead, uh, Casey. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Casey. I am a health coach and I lead and am an advocate for change in our community. I run a nonprofit as well as a business and uh, like to develop leaders and inspire us to take action. And Rotary is the perfect place for that. Is that what here to do? Thank you very much. Uh, Steve? Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Scott. Uh, I am a three time past president. I've been a member of Rotary for about 11 years now. 
I'm the current treasurer of the club, and I am a State Farm agent in San Dimas. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Dan? My name is Dan Gribben, uh, fourth year as a Rotary member. I'm the Dean of Students over at Chaparral and Vista High School, and I'm proud to kind of serve as the member from Benita Unified as well. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mike? Hi everyone, uh, Mike Wallace. I am the president of Better Home Financial. We are a mortgage brokerage here in downtown San Dimas. Um, I have been a Rotarian for, I believe over five years and I'm a past president. Thank you, Mike. It looks like that's all the Rotarians we have on today. Looks like we're missing Tim. But what I'll go ahead and do is uh, pass it on to our guests. I would love to hear who you are and um, just a quick 10, 10 minutes, or I should say not 10 minutes, 10 seconds, uh, or even shorter than the intro introduction before I introduce our uh, guest speaker. So Peyton, if you wanna go ahead and, and go first. Yeah, of course, thank you. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Peyton Russell. I'm a senior at Azusa Pacific University this year and I work for SurfPro of Glendora San Dimas and Irwindale Baldwin Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doug? Hello everybody, my name is Doug Beach. I also work for SurfPro of Glendora. Peyton and I are co-workers. Um, we have a business, business philosophy for giving back to the community, have had contact with Rotary for sure. Um, KCCU frequently at the chamber meeting. So good to see you again and uh, uh, glad to be here and, and uh, be a part of this meeting. Thank you very much. Oh, I see Greg on here. You wanna go ahead and, and reintroduce yourself, Greg? Hey again, this is Greg Pilato. I'm actually a retiree next door in Laverne, um, but you there. I'm a school psychologist, also running for the Benita School Board this election. Thank you very much. Uh, Joseph? Hello everyone. I'm Captain Joseph Urban with the Salvation Army in Williston, North Dakota, where it gets a little chillier in the winters here. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for joining us. I do see, is that Mani? Yes, it is. Hi, <laughs> Hi how are you? Please introduce yourself for those that don't know you. Well, I'm Moni Kappa. I live in San Dimas for over 20 years and uh, both my kids attended uh, the, uh, the Bonita Unified School District, both Lever the San Dimas High and Bonita High School. Um, and a grandma, that that's basically covers me. <laughs> and most of you guys already know me. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Moni, for joining us today. No now, problem. did, let's see, did I miss anybody here? I think we have everybody. Maggie. So, well, besides Maggie. So let me, Maggie, thank you so much for joining us today. And I, I do want to apologize because I had your, uh, information about you and it is locked and I cannot get it from my phone. So I'm okay. very embarrassed that it won't come up. So I'm just gonna have you introduce yourself to us. Uh, I know a lot about Dave and Margaret because I've had many friends work and, and do service work for Dave and Margaret. So um, I'd love for you to just share a little bit of who you are in your background. And again, my, my sincere apologies for not being able to pull it up. Oh, no worries at all. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Maggie Bullman. I'm the Chief Community Engagement Officer for David and Margaret Youth and Family Services. I've been there for about three years. And, um, you know, I have a whole presentation. We'll go over a little bit about what David and Margaret does. But for what um, I'm responsible for is the communications, the outreach, the volunteers, the um, brand management, and fundraising. So. Um, almost everything external facing is what my department kind of manages. So it's really nice to be here and it's a pleasure to meet you all, at least virtually. Thank you very much, Maggie. And please go on with your presentation. Okay, can I, um, I can share this. If you can share the screen for me, that would be great. Like I said, I do have a PowerPoint.
You should be able to share now. You should be at the okay. bottom of the screen. Let's see. Uh, no, hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. Give it a try. Okay. Um, here we go. Hopefully this works. Yes, it's up. All right. All right. So this is David and Margaret, Youth and Family Services. Um, we are located in Laverne, 1350 uh, 3rd Street in Laverne, and we have been there um, for 110 years, if you can believe that. Um, it's been quite a while. Um, and you know, David and Margaret Youth and Family Services started off as an orphanage and has become foster care, social services, mental health. Um, you can see up on the screen our mission, but basically we do whatever it takes to make sure that children, youth, and families have the services and support they need to recover from any trauma they've experienced and to live as full and functional lives as they are able to. Um, we do that through an array of services, which I will be going over today, but we are driven, all of us, the staff of about 150 or so, through our shared values of respect and integrity and knowledge, and service, and teamwork, choice and accountability. These really drive everything we do. We wanna make sure that our work is client centered and that the community we provide for our participants and clients and families and our staff and our community are based around these values. It's uh, really our driving force and kind of our guiding principles. Um, and as I mentioned, David and Margaret has been around since 1910, and we have this amazing archive of really old pictures, if anyone ever has a few hours and there's not a pandemic going on, we invite you to come and look through those because it's really amazing to see the history of the area, not just David and Margaret, but also of the entire Laverne community. Um, so initially, David and Margaret was formed as an orphanage because there was no nothing nearby to help the kids that were in need and um, some of the what is now the United Methodist Church women came together and um, they were actually our first board of directors and a banker in Laverne named Henry Coons donated an old uh, hotel. He had built it up thinking there was going to be this great big railway explosion that kind of never happened so we got the old building from him. Um, and you can see a photo of it there. It fell into disrepair um, about 10 years after he gave it to us. So um, the kids who were living there, the orphans or partial orphans, orphans, just people whose families couldn't um, manage to take care of them at the time, were actually taken and placed in homes all throughout Laverne while the building was torn down and a new building was built. And that new building is that new building was built in 1925 and is the Whitney building that's on the David and Margaret campus now. It's the big white house toward the back. And it was at the time, the state of the art, like just an amazing building that had wings for different, um, different sexes were in different wings of the building and different ages were on different floors. And it, um, you know, even in my time here, we've had people come back who are, um, you know, a little older now who can come and tell us that like this conference room used to be where their dorms were and where they lived. So it's really neat to have um, guests come back and share with us what it was like to live in this Whitney building. Um, this Whitney building was built on the land that um, was donated by the United Methodist Women, the United Methodist Church. And it is the oldest cement building in the city of Laverne. So a little bit of fun history for you there. Um, and again, when campus is open and you know things are a little more flexible, right now we don't have guests on campus for obvious reasons, but um, when things are kind of more back to normal, we, I invite you to come and have a tour. We have a 17.5 acre campus. It's really quite lovely. Um, and we can show you the old Whitney building and some other um, parts of campus. So, at David and Margaret, um, like I said, we have this beautiful 17.5 acre campus and that great big old building, which is now all administrative offices. Um, and these are the programs that we currently offer at David and Margaret. 
that Whitney building remained an orphanage until the 1960s. And at that time, um, the idea of an orphanage was sort of falling out of favor and um, the young people that lived on campus were moved into small group homes and we built seven of them on campus. That's what you can see on the slide. Um, and those are still um, housing children today. And then on the other side, which is my right side, I hope it's your right side, I don't want to confuse you, but that's one of, that's our school, the Joan Macy School, which I'll talk a little bit about later. So we have a foster care and adoption program, and we work with um, several different counties, LA, San Bernardino, Riverside, uh, oh, and Orange County too. And we offer foster care for youth ages zero to 17 and a program called intensive services foster care, which is for youth and um, children who need more support than typical foster care. It's usually therapeutic in nature, meaning they have some mental health struggles or behavioral issues. So they're placed only one child with a family and there's a wraparound therapeutic um, services to really help them be successful in that home placement. And this has really replaced the idea of the old group home that was kind of, has kind of been falling out of favor in the last few years and trying to give kids more intensive services in a family setting. Um, the foster care and adoption agency also does home studies to help people prepare for adoptions, whether that's a private adoption or through the county through foster care. Um, and we also do some adoptions. And there's a really amazing staff of social workers that help the families through those processes. Um, so if you are thinking about fostering or want to just learn a little bit more, we have virtual online um, orientations twice a month and we also do them in Spanish. We also have a group of youth that we provide foster care for that are um, unaccompanied minors who have come into the country to get away from whatever bad things were happening where they were. And um, sometimes they'll end up needing to be placed in foster care because they don't have sponsors or family members here. And we provide that service as well. And on this particular slide, I will share with you all, I adopted my son through foster care. I got him when he was three weeks old and he was four pounds. He was nine weeks premature. And um, he's 10 now. It's a very different reality, <laughs> but fun. And it is a very complex journey. And knowing that we have the great staff that we do makes me really confident in saying if anyone wants to explore it, it's a great staff to help you through that. So, um, and I'm also happy to talk more about that experience um, if anyone's interested in hearing about it. Um, I, of course, could talk about my family all day, but that's not what we're here for. Um, we also have the New Beginnings program, and this I touched on a little bit with the foster care for, um, we have a program with the Office of Refugee Resettlement, which is a federal agency, and they have youth, um, usually about ages like six to 17, who come into the country without their family members, and they're coming to live with a sponsor, whether it's a relative or a good friend. And when they arrive in the country, the government needs to make sure that their sponsors have the appropriate paperwork and that they are who they say they are and they're not going to do bad things to the kids. So they come and they stay at David and Margaret in those cottages that I showed you. Um, and we have a couple houses off campus as well. And they'll stay for two or three weeks and they'll go to school and they'll have um, assessments done and they'll work with their attorneys to get everything in place so that they can safely move on to their sponsors. So we're just like a warm, welcoming stop for them on the way. Um, and then we have our mental health programs. And these are much more community based. They're out in the community. And we have um, therapists that will see the kids and the families wherever they need to be. It can be on campus, it can be in their schools, it can be at their homes. Right now that is done through a combination of telehealth and socially distanced, like outside visits, whatever a family's comfortable with is kind of what we do. Uh, the mental health programs are through the Department of Mental Health and they are funded through that. And you need to be on Medi-Cal to qualify for those programs. 
We do a lot of work with the school districts and we have quite a few um, good relationships with both Bonita and Pomona seem to be where most of our um, families are. So um, that's our mental health program. And again, just really kind, caring staff that have put their whole heart and life into this. So it's a really great, uh, great program. And some of these mental health care social workers will work with some of the foster youth that we were talking about um, on the previous slide. We also have our Joan Macy School, which is a non-public school, and it is for uh, female identifying kids, grades one through 12, and it's small group setting. And while it's not qualified as an autism uh, pr program school, we do have many children with autism who attend and other kids who have IEPs and just need that additional support that they weren't able to get from their school district. So there's very small class size, uh, a lot of aids, special training and tools to work with them to help them do their best and really flourish in the school setting. Um, there's additional behavioral management, social skills, healthy living, and we also provide door-to-door um, -door transportation. So the um, children have everything taken care of from doorstep to doorstep. And again, everything has shifted a little bit since the spring with Joan Macy School. And they do um, everything remotely, right? Just like everyone else right now. And the teachers will sometimes drive around and deliver the packets to the kids, to the girls. And they do a school-wide Zoom meeting once a week so that everyone can kind of see each other. There's only about 40 students in the whole school um, because of the individualized care. So it's just a way for them to connect and be together. And the teachers have been really creative about bringing school spirit and energy in um, to this online learning environment. They had a pajama day the other day. They did a spirit day that they're planning for next week. So lots of fun activities to try to keep the girls engaged. We also have another program that is called the Learning Enhancement Center. And this is one of our very few fee-for-service programs. And this is for um, kids and adults, actually. And if they are having trouble with some learning and cognition issues and just kind of how the brain is processing information, this is an assessment and then a series of um, exercises and routines to really help kind of get the brain back in balance, get the left side and the right side working together to really help with the ability to improve your fine motor skills and um, your processing um, tools. So it's a great program and it's by appointment. And like I said, that is one of our few um, fee for service. Um, and now I'm moving on to our COMPASS programs at David and Margaret. And as you can see, COMPASS stands for Creating Opportunities and Making Personal Advancements to Self-Sufficiency. It's on the tip of everyone's tongue, I'm sure. But the reason that um, we came up with that name is this group of programs is all for um, a group of individuals that are referred to as TAY, which means nothing to most people, but that stands for Transitional Age Youth. So it's young adults who are aging out of foster care, usually who are still in the system and didn't have a family to call their own. And they're making that challenging transition into adulthood. And um, I think with the exception of maybe one of you, it's been a while probably since you've made that transition, but you know, most of us had a lot of support, whether it was from family or friends or you know, in school. And a lot of these young adults don't have that. They don't have anyone and they don't have a place to call home. So we have a series of programs built to support them. Um, and that is what the COMPASS programs entails. Our focus is on youth aging out of the foster care system, but as these programs grow, it is growing to serve more of the community and more young adults who are facing challenges in this time, regardless of whether they've been in foster care or not. It might be transitional age youth who are facing homelessness for an array of reasons outside of foster care and there it's becoming a more and more inclusive program so through the department of children and family services we have a program called the transitional housing program and that is for youth aging out of foster care where there are um, they live on apartments throughout the community that are paid for 
but we provide the support services to them. So we make sure that they are learning life skills like cooking and cleaning and budgeting and make sure that they've finished school and if they want to work, but that they're doing what they need to to be work ready. So we found that with the transitional housing programs that are county funded that those were really great, but that our Tay needed additional services. So as a result of that, David and Margaret, like many other nonprofits that do this type of work, um, added and augmented and supplemented those programs. So we have something called the Youth Workforce Training Program, where we specifically work with the young adults to get them career ready. And we have internships where we pay the youth and they go to work either at at the David and Margaret facility or at a local business at no cost to the business with the support of a peer mentor or a job coach or both depending for anywhere from 160 to 400 hours to help them get that real life work experience. Um, and sometimes uh, young adults will do one or two of these internships and if it works out, sometimes they can actually stay on to become employees, which has always been a great success. Um, we really like this program. It really, that hands-on learning really helps. And I do want to kind of share one quick example with you. We had one young adult who was really hesitant to go work at a retail store. And we just couldn't understand it because they were bright and personable and we really wanted to help them take this next step. And it turned out that they had moved schools like 16 or 17, it's like some crazy amount of times. And they had never learned how to count change. They just didn't know how to count money. So the career coach spent one afternoon counting money with them. Um, and they got it, of course, because they're very bright. And they went on and they got the job and they did great. And they got a permanent placement like within a few weeks. So sometimes there can be these incredibly simple barriers that you and I might not even think about that we just need to provide that support and help that individual move forward in their lives. So things like that are always really gratifying when in the youth workforce training program. Um, we also have a college and career readiness side to the program where we'll work with the young adults if they haven't finished high school, we'll either help them finish high school, um, whether it be through online learning or um, Really, you know, before all this regular in person classes or a GED. And then we also will work with youth on career choices and getting them into the community college pipeline. We have one young adult um, who's just going to start at Citrus soon who um, wants to do some of the music stuff over there, which is really exciting. And we've been able to help him through. Um, through our programs and then also accessing other programs for foster youth to get the tools he needs to be ready to start school. So that's really exciting. Um, and today at the same time as we are doing this, we have a preview uh, Zoom meeting for our new Compass Point drop-in center, which is a drop-in center for, for transitional aged youth, um, which we had hoped would be open and running right now, but because of COVID, of course it's not but it is a place for the youth to come and eventually hang out. It's a nice home lights like setting with a big kitchen where they can cook, an area to lounge to hang out and watch TV. There's computers and a study area. There's a place to take a shower if they need it. There's a place to do laundry if they need it. There's a clothing closet if they need clothes for an interview or for work or school or just need some clothes. Um, and we also have staff down there in offices to provide um, social services, mental health counseling. And then the other piece that we're doing there is providing linkages to a bunch of different organizations in the community. So whether it's healthcare or wellness or banking or education where they can come in and have office hours at the drop-in center so that the young adults don't have to get all over the place because they don't all have cars. Most of them don't have cars. And it's really easy for us to say, oh, you just run across town over here, pick up this piece of paper, get the proof you need, and then you can go register for a class. That can be incredibly complicated when you don't have money or a car. So uh, we realize that. So we're trying to bring as many of the resources they need um, together in one place so that they can make a one-stop shop for what they need to move forward in their lives. And then also just have a safe, welcoming, warm environment. 
where they can access the services they need. So we're super, super excited about that. And like I said, that is just starting to open. We've been building that out on the bottom floor of that Whitney building, that 1925 building um, for over a year. And that is through um, a large grant from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation that they um, funded us to do that. So we're really, really grateful and super excited to see that launch and really provide a resource for transitional age youth in the whole community. We're starting with the ones we serve at David and Margaret and then just kind of uh, expanding out, we hope, once we get past um, all these restrictions with COVID. So you can see this is kind of what I was talking about, like all the different services that the drop-in center and the Compass programs have to offer. Um, and I will just note that we got all of those services kind of in one place based on us reaching out to the Tay, to the transitional age youth and saying, hey, what is it you want? What do you need? We did focus groups, we did surveys. We really took the time to hear from them what they wanted in their community. Um, another thing David and Margaret does is on the second and fourth Thursday of every month, except for Thanksgiving, which is freakishly coming up soon already, hard to believe, um, we do a contactless food bank distribution. So if anyone in the community needs resources um, of food, we do that twice a month and it's open to everybody. So I wanted to make sure people knew about that. Um, we also have Dave and Maggie Center, which is essentially a discount store on the back side of our campus. And there at the discount, um, we have items that are new items that are donated and some that we buy at a very low price and then we pass on those savings to our customers and consumers. So it's a great resource for bargain shopping in our community. It is also a way to help fund and support David and Margaret. So by shopping there, any revenues that come in over and above operating expenses go back into the programs. Another piece of the center that's really exciting is that some of the transitional age youth I spoke about, they actually get to work there for their internships. So they're learning hands-on, they're getting real life work experience right there at David and Margaret. And this is on the back side, on the Palomari side. Um, and then the one thing when I was talking about the Compass programs that I didn't just mention, we also have in that same area on Palomares um, permanent supportive housing. So I talked about the housing we have for the transitional age youth for just for a couple years as they're getting established. And then once they age out, they have to leave those apartments. But we also have about 25 apartments for transitional age youth who have at least one mental health diagnoses, which if you've grown up in foster care, you're gonna have one. I mean, many of us do anyway, but if you go through the trauma of foster care, it's often you know, true that you'll have some additional issues. Um, so we have those apartments as well, also on the side of the campus. So um, that's another great opportunity for us to support our community and those in our community who need some housing stability. Um, yeah, oh, and the center, it says on the slide, but I want to make sure I say it, it's open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. And I really encourage you to stop by and check it out if you haven't already done so. Um, it's crazy some of the great bargains you can get. Sometimes you can get a pair of vans for like 10 or 20 bucks. It's really fun. Um, we love to see what kind of bargains we'll find. It's never the same thing. And there's also um, food, both frozen, fresh, and pantry staples, as well as household and clothing. So that's sort of the overview of the agency is kind of in a quick rundown, but here are some things you can do to support us. As I mentioned, you can shop at the store that is helping the transitional age youth get experience. It's providing revenue and it's great bargains for you. Um, as the chief fundraiser, I always love a donation. Donations are fabulous. Um, and if people are in a position to do so, those really help us with you know, taking care of these extra COVID needs that we have, as well as to provide additional resources and support to the uh, kids that we serve. Uh, it helps pay for those internships. It helps pay for support for the foster kids. Um, and there's also our um, newsletter you can sign up for. 
And you can also um, volunteer, although the volunteers are a little bit less, um, happening a little bit less these days um, because of COVID. So that's my presentation and I'm happy to hear any questions or comments. Thank you very much, Maggie. Um, can you hear me everybody? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have any questions? One, one thing I'd like to say, Maggie, is that I have gone through, um, to the, uh, the store mm -hmm. a couple years back. A friend of mine told me as a secret, said, don't tell anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I personally bought my son at the time that was 13 shoes that were Nikes there for probably about $15. So yeah, it, it's a great store. So those that haven't gone in there, they're brand new clothing, shoes, every, you know, knickknacks. So it, it is a great bargain. And, you know, at the time to have a 13-year-old son that skateboards, scooters, and messes up shoes all the time, it was a blessing in disguise. So it was a great, great opportunity and great savings. Well, I'm happy to hear that. I think I remember that um, that shipment, and I actually picked it up in my uh, car and had to make a few trips to get that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, so just for time, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, move it to our fast craft talk. And then if we have some time, we can have some questions after the fact for Maggie. So thank you again, Maggie. And I'll go ahead and pass it thank on to Peyton all. Russell. Great. Thank you all. Um, great job, Maggie. Um, I was a foster youth. And so it's amazing to hear the amazing work that you're doing. Uh, job very well done. So... Uh, can everyone see my screen okay? Oh, there we go. Okay, all right. So um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peyton Russell. I'm a sales and marketing representative for Glendora, Surf Pro, Glendora San Dimas and Irwindale Baldwin Park. Today, I will be telling you a little bit about Surf Pro services, but also about our commitment to the community. Um, come on. There we go. So here are a few members of our team. The first photo is our owner, Joe McCann, with his wife, Danny, and their three boys. Uh, they've owned the franchises for a little over 15 years now. The next photo is our sales manager, Doug, and his wife, Grace, who is joining me here today. The bottom photo includes our restoration specialists and technicians, such great guys and a great team who are also all members of the Glendora San Dimas community. So I'm just gonna jump right into the services that we offer. We are a provider of large loss cleaning and emergency services. While our main focus is the restoration of water damage, we also restore fire and storm damage and conduct mold remediation in homes, businesses, and commercial buildings. We're a trusted leader in the damage restoration industry and have the training, equipment, and expertise to handle your restoration and cleaning needs no matter the scale. As a bonus, we provide 24-hour emergency services and are dedicated to responding immediately to commercial and residential needs. No damage is too big for us to handle. Oh, there we go. One thing we pride ourselves here at ServPro is that we focus on restoring versus replacing because restoring the affected areas of your property is going to cost significantly less than demolishing and replacing those areas. This restore first mentality also allows us to get your home and business back to pre-fire condition quicker and with less disruption. Our mission statement is to make disasters like it never even happened. Additionally, for a stress-free claim process, ServPro works with insurance to help manage the insurance process and paperwork. Certified Surf Pro Clean is a defensive cleaning program that goes beyond janitorial cleaning and carpet cleaning. It's a higher standard of clean amidst the coronavirus pandemic. This viral pathogen cleaning service helps ensure the cleanliness of restaurants, businesses, and public spaces in the communities we call home. We're very active in several businesses in the area. In this service, we can conduct off hours so we don't disrupt your business. So now I'm gonna go through and show you a few examples of what our large loss, pro large loss projects look like in local communities. A few years ago in Upland, a huge commercial plant experienced a fire started from faulty equipment 
and we restored the building to its best potential while also ridding the building of odor left behind by the suit. With all the fires going on, definitely something to consider as well. Here are a few photos from a commercial building that experienced heavy storm damage in Monrovia. While thankfully we don't get too many of these extreme cases, no damage is too big for us to handle. SurfPro of Glendora San Dimas takes great pride in being a part of the Glendora San Dimas community. We understand that communities like ours hold Americas together. We want to do our part to ensure the community thrives by helping those less fortunate, keeping the area safe, and making, those commu making our community the best that it can be. A few years ago, we contributed to a can drive a local food pantry was hosting. And then we also partnered with the American Cancer Society during a Relay, Relay for Life event. We care for the community because we are a part of it too, and that's something that we really like to emphasize over here at Serve Pro. Well, thank you all for your time, and remember to think of Serve Pro whenever you have an emergency. We're here to make it like it never even happened. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peyton, I, uh, for what you your presentation. Can you guys see me? I was having technical issues. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and pass it on to our fine master, Casey. I was just replying to Maggie on my question to her since I didn't get to ask it. Sorry. Oh, you're good. All right, fine time. It's a fine time to talk and declare what is right in the world, what is not right in the world, and what we want to share. So in the Rotary, we find ourselves to basically share what's on our mind. Uh, I'm doubling anybody's fine if they want to talk about the debate. So just use $10, I'm going to double it, and then it's 10 uh, But you are free to find yourself, so come off mute, Rotarian members, and uh, show us what's on your mind. Tell us what's fine, what's not fine, and who's I'll, I'll go. Casey, I'll uh, jump in. Oh. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I'm going to find myself $5 because um, the Dodgers playoff uh, season starts tonight, and so I am fine. Glad you find Mike. Take it away, Steve. Um, I'm going to find myself $10 uh, in honor of Serve Pro being here doing what I do for a living. I work with a lot of companies like that. Um, Serve Pro is phenomenal. Uh, that specific branch has done great work for my clients, so I just want to say I appreciate them being here. And um, if anybody ever needs service like that, they are a great place to start. Thank you so much. I'm going to give a. You're I'm, welcome. I'm going to do a, a five dollar fine here because I want to give you an update on the master's class. Uh, so far, uh, 122 teachers have taken advantage of that, and they're online. And one of the quotes we got back from an instructional aide at the intervention program at Oak Mesa. She said, that is amazing. I have had this on my wish list for so long. I am grateful for this gift. So I also had a long discussion with uh, the assistant superintendent in about 30 days. If the, of the 522 passes that we got a grant for are not used, we'll be, begin to expend this. In uh, we're talking Glendora, Covina, Charter Oak, and Pomona into the surrounding school districts to make this gift available throughout really our region. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks for the update as well. Anybody else would like to find themselves today? I'll find uh, myself $21 today. $21, my, tell us why. My son turned 21 at 1043 this morning. And um, I am very proud of him. I cannot believe I have a 21 year old child because every time I look at him, I, I feel like he's my brother. As weird as that sounds, because I just don't feel that he is my son, because we joke around. We have a great uh, relationship, both my children and I, but I feel like I grew up with my son. So yeah, he, and then actually, you know what I'll do is, then I'll also find myself an additional $10 because last week when Steve jinxed me and said, you should keep that $5 for the dog. <laughs> Well, my German Shepherd, uh, um, what is it, German Shepherd mix, a Husky mix, that, that girl is out of control. My children have never gave me a problem, ever, never had a, 
that dog is like a child that would that you have to worry about going into like underneath the sink to pull the bleach or something and drink it that's that that type of a child that that dog is it is the hardest thing but you know so my this may be diva's last <laughs> fight of the year but uh we're glad we're glad that you're fine in the midst of the dog not being fine yeah well you know it is what it is <laughs> i allowed it to happen <laughs> so thank you thank you team of rotary to find ourselves and declare what's going on in our lives let's uh transition on to the action 360 which is uh in raymond's hands today so what's the problem what's well, harris yeah i mean uh I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say to the guy. He acts like we're some kind of poison sumac or something. <laughs> well, Woj, I think we're just going to have to learn to be a little more understanding. I appreciate the fact that, uh, that Harris has special problems. Like what? Like he's black. I knew that. <laughs> Well, I thought those differences weren't important. <laughs> well, they're not. But they are. Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's like a Polish joke. What? Well, if somebody came up to you and said, um, to how many poles does it take to make popcorn? You wouldn't appreciate that, would you? No. And I can understand that. <laughs> But I could never feel what you are feeling, because I'm not Polish. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I can understand it, but that's as close as I can get. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Mark. How many does it take? <laughs> So our Action 360, this uh, is the Barney Miller Show, a sitcom in the uh, 1970s. I never actually was interested in it, but I did date a girl in the 70s who was, so I ended up watching it. Um, you just saw a conversation that may have been one of the most profound things said on network television in this respect. Uh, there is a whole body of philosophy on what we know and how we know it. And we have to understand we can understand, but we can't know. And let me give you another example. My youngest son was born without a right arm. From the age of months old to his 22nd birthday, every year was get a new prosthetic device. Uh, when he did things in life like Eagle Scout, he had to rappel off of the side of the building. You know, how do you do it with a one-armed boy? My wife founded a, 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 a nonprofit, and from Bakersfield onto the Mexican border, anytime a child was born without a limb, uh, there were families who would go to the hospital, and we would take our children at various uh, ages. I'm, I'm actually in a meeting. I put you on mute. Um, I mean, I put, I put them on you. you. Um, oh, you know what? I think they're, let me call you. Hang on a minute. Let me get rid of that. Sorry. Bye. So we would go there and show them children of various ages who had, who were born without limbs. So I understood being limb deficient. And then sparring in karate about six years ago, I broke my arm. And I flew the next night uh, to a third world country where I was working and that arm didn't set. And for 15 months, my shoulder locked up, my elbow and my wrist. And so I did not have the use of my arm for a year and a half. I was doing the dishes uh, one day with one hand and my son walked in behind me from school and he looked at me and he walked over and he went right behind me and he said, now you know. And see, the point is we can't know, we can understand. And this is important for two reasons. First, it's the fundamental part of diversity in our communities and our organizations, bringing people with different backgrounds, different experiences, so that we can test our ideas against their knowing. And secondly, next time you're having a conversation with somebody, especially a tense conversation, remember, you can understand how they feel, but you really can't know. And that's your Action 364, September 30th. Thank you, Raymond. That was a, a really good um, conversation piece that I'm sure a lot of us, some of us um, don't want to go through or want to talk about, but it, it's actually a really good uh, topic that you brought up.
So I wanted to go ahead and, and go over our um, calendar. One thing is I, I still have not received everybody's, um, I'll make sure, can you hear me? Okay, good. Um, I, I still haven't received everybody's response on what time is the best time for them, either morning or, or evening for our, um, our board meeting. My majority is gonna rule. So if you can message me, um, either text me or something just so I could get it because I'm going to email you within the hour just based on who, who responds because I don't have everybody's response. Uh, so if you can do that, um, again, what we're gonna go over, uh, there's quite a bit of information that we need to go over. So it will be about an hour long and we're thinking of doing it on the 6th of October. Also, uh, our club assembly is October 7th. Uh, as well as um, we do have a couple of other uh, items on here. Uh, our meeting with uh, our presenting, Terry was beautiful. I'm glad those that were able to make it. Uh, Terry uh, was honored with um, the Paul Harris Fellow Award. And um, you know he was very grateful. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for all of us to be, have uh, been a part of that and given uh, just another smile on his face was, was really sweet. And thank you for, um, for Marianne for allowing us to come and present it to him. Now, besides that, uh, Raymond, do you wanna briefly talk about the hands-on community service project, the Give Warmth? Do you, we have a little okay, bit of time? So, uh, Captain Irvine from uh, the Salvation Army is on here. Uh, November yep. 8th, it'll be with the, the, well, the Rotary Club, the Masonic Lodge, and now the Cub Scouts have jumped on board. And essentially the lodge will use the parking lot as a contactless, contactless delivery. We will inspect the coats and the, and the uh, scarves and the gloves and the hats and the ones that are serviceable and clean will package immediately. We'll also accept donations for shipping. And then on, uh, that we'll be doing that on November 8th. And then on November 9th, we'll be shipping all that stuff to uh, Williston, North Dakota, where by that time it's gonna be pretty cold up there, I imagine, Captain Irvine. And so, um, we got all kinds of people involved. You'll be getting an email from me because we need to have a committee and we need some people to participate the, in this committee. And I'm really looking for somebody to chair the committee. I'll, I'll help drive it, but I need a chair. And so uh, you'll get an email from me. It'll be a combined committee of the three community groups working together. Anybody have any questions? I have a comment. Tim's not here, so I think he should be our chair. <laughs> That is his fine and also his privilege. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You miss a meeting, get elected. That's the way it works. There you go. Perfect. So um, thank you for that, Raymond. Really quickly, uh, Drexel Smith from Rotoplast Latin America will be uh, with us next week. And we are starting Stomp, which is student of the month and um, parent next week or is that the P part of it? I've never even asked. What is that's, the P part? That's professional. The P professional. Part. Yeah, and, and just kidding. Just to kind of keep you guys updated, our student of the month will not be chosen until actually next Wednesday is our first rally. So we won't have one for the meeting. But I'm hoping I'll make the meeting next Wednesday because we have our first rally. So which will be online. Okay, so then we'll, we'll adjust the calendar to that. And uh, please, uh, everybody, um, everybody that's on here, check our calendar. We have great speakers uh, coming up and it's been, it's being worked on constantly adding uh, people that want to be uh, you know, business professionals that want to be a part of what we do. And if I can go ahead and um, move it over to Mike for the four way test. Hi, everyone. Uh, so the the four-way test is, uh, I, I have uh, this plaque here. Uh, Ray, it looks like Raymond put it up there um, on the screen. But uh, yeah, I keep this in my office. Um, it, it is the rotary four-way test. This is the uh, almost kind of a code that uh, Rotarians are encouraged um, to uh, do business. It, in, in this manner and also um, to uh, kind of how we approach, um, you know, really 
any any sort of situation um, in our life that it may apply. So uh, first is, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Um, and, you know, really when, when you think about those four, four, four different approaches um, to uh, whether it's a business transaction or um, a comment on social media or, um, uh, you know, how you um, are, are going to do business or um, interact with, with people. Um, if, if, it, if it passes all four of those tests, um, you know, I, I've never in my life had something pass this four-way test and then end up um, with a, uh, you know, a, a fight or a, a, a falling out. Um, and really it's, it's just sort of a, a way to, um, to be sure that your heart is in the right place and, and that you have the, the right approach to um, any sort of interaction that, uh, that you're going to face, be it in business or in your personal life. And that is today's uh, four-way test presentation. Thank you, Mike. Well, uh, with the last two minutes that I have, I'd like to say thank you to everybody that, that joined us today. Um, I, everybody's um, presentation was great. Uh, one thing that I, I forgot to mention during the calendar is that we still have until October 2nd for that um, Art of Peace competition. Uh, so anybody that you know that might be planning on submitting, um, please make sure that they submit their um, it for before the deadline to make to ensure that they can be part of it. Also, um, again, if those that uh, that are Rotarians uh, from San Dimas, please send me your time frame because I'm just in one hour. I'm just going to send out the time that I think would be best for everybody. So. <laughs> I'm trying to be accommodating to an extent, but I don't want to forget about it in an hour from now. So other than that, um, Maggie, if, there, if anybody had any questions, I think we have room for maybe one question for Maggie. Um, anybody has any questions? No? Okay. Well, uh, Maggie, I definitely will send you an email. Uh, there's a couple of things I would like to um, go over with you. I'd love supporting uh, Dave and Margaret and um, everything they do. And thank you everybody again for joining us today. Please uh, join us again next week. Uh, keep, you know, uh, look us up on uh, Facebook and uh, check out our calendar. We have a lot of great topics, a lot of great time for you to uh, talk about your business and support uh, a local cause. So thank you again, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your week.